on Netflix, I caught The Princess Bride. It had been a couple decades since I'd viewed this, and if you love this movie, you're going to want to turn off this review right now. If you hadn't seen the movie, you know, pretty much likewise, because I'm going deep into spoilers. Princess Bride, uh, this is like 1987 film from Rob Reiner. It's a comedy, sort of a send-off of fairy tales. So we have Columbo walking into the bedroom of, uh, uh, shit, forgot the kid's name from uh, the Wonder Years. Was it Kevin? I think so. So he walks into Kevin's room. Kevin's kind of sick. And he's like, uh, hey, I'm going to read you a story, kid, because you're playing the role of my grandson today. And he's like, all right, fine, make it quick. He starts reading this book, The Princess Bride. And in The Princess Bride, we have, uh, we were transported to the world of that story. We have Buttercup, played by Robin Wright, later known as Robin Wright Penn. You know, Jenny from Forrest Gump. That was an off-the-cuff Forrest Gump impression. And it was not too bad. Give me a like for that alone, and say that you did so. So we have her show up, her name's Buttercup. She uh, rides horses, there's this farm boy who uh, puts the shoes on the horses, and she kind of bosses them around, and he just always says, as you wish. Uh, this guy, Wesley, played by Carrie Elways, who, he's usually charming or evil in a movie. It's like one or the other. So, eventually they fall in love because, you know, she'd whipped them enough. And uh, he has to ride off, and it's, uh, word gets to her that he was killed by this uh, dangerous pirate, Roberts. And she's going to be married to the prince and become like the new queen. So right now she's the princess bride. Well, she wants to run off and she ends up uh, being kidnapped by these three guys. Uh, Inigo Montoya, you kill my father, prepare to die. More on that in a little bit. Fezzik, Andre the Giant, pretty self dis You know, I think you get the idea there. So, uh, and then this other guy, who likes to say inconceivable. You know, I feel like the catchphrases from this have given it a nostalgia cred where maybe it's not entirely deserved. So, yeah, people like to run around inconceivable. You kill my father, prepare to die. I, they say the lines too many times. Like, you can't really get iconic movie line status when it's repeated like five times in a movie. That, that It's like Sonic the Hedgehog. Sega says, hey, we made up this guy to be our mascot. Mario had to earn being the mascot. There's a difference. So to make those lines incredibly obvious hit you over the head with them, it gets a bit annoying. While they run off with her, skipping ahead a bit, they head to these cliffs of insanity, uh, attempt to scale them, but they're being chased by a guy. This guy's kind of got a Zorro mask on, wearing black. He gets to the top of the cliffs. He has a sword fight with Inigo Montoya. Inigo says, hey, I'll tell you what, have you seen this guy with six fingers on one hand? He killed my dad a while ago and I could use some help killing him. He's like, sorry, haven't seen him. Okay, let's fight. So they have a duel and, uh, you know, the stranger, he wins. He knocks him out. The pursuit goes further has a run in with Fezzik, is able to choke him out. Andre didn't put up an amazing fight here. Could have easily continued bashing him against the rocks. I don't think any guy could survive between the rock and a hard place that is Andre the Giant. So that happens. He knocks, he chokes him out. He catches up with the inconceivable. Tricks him to drink and poison. The way he dies is kind of funny. He's like, ah, but I tricked you. I reversed the cups and uh just slides over. I like that. That was probably the funniest part of the movie. This is a movie that tries too hard to be funny. Again, hitting you over the head with what it finds funny. So, the stranger reveals himself to be Wesley. Buttercup is very happy about this. They run off, uh, continue, and uh, all, all the while the prince, Humperdinck, is chasing them. 
Uh, this is the guy who used to be doing Susan Sarandon, and uh, he's the uh, the vampire in the original Fright Night. So uh, he's pursuing them. They go to this uh, fire swamp where there's these squirts of fire coming up out of the land. And there's also quicksand. Buttercup falls in, and this was bold as hell. Like. To have Carrie Elways dive headfirst into this little patch of quicksand under the possibility that, hey, if people do their job, they're going to open the trap door and I won't kill myself. You won't find a stunt like this done today, that's for sure. So uh, he rescues her, fights an unu a, a rodent of unusual size, that unusual size being large. And uh, eventually, they're they're captured by Prince Humperdinck. He's uh, going to take uh, uh, Wesley away, but they strike a deal. Says, "Okay, I'll let him go." And then uh, the uh, Buttercup, she's like, "Hey, I don't want to marry you. This isn't right." Humperdinck says, "Okay, here's the deal. I'll send my four fastest ships to go out and find Wesley, and he'll come and get you. Okay, but do consider marrying me." Well, without really checking in on this, just one day he says, hey, the wedding's tomorrow. And she's not really put off by it. It's like, did we miss a scene here? And then he says, oh yeah, all my ships are gonna be celebrating. Well, what about the four fastest? Oh yeah, that's right, they're not here yet. You lied to me. That just seems off. She should've been like, hey, we're not getting married. Where do you get this idea? He, he could have said, oh, the ships returned and Wesley isn't interested, or he died, he was killed. I mean, at least give her some kind of story there. Did you forget that you were lying to this character? So, Wesley's been tortured. He's even been killed. He's been, uh, they, they take the torture level too high on him and it kills him. But uh, we catch in with uh, Inigo Montoya. He's gone to drinking. Uh, Fezzik helps get him, get him off uh, booze. And there Fezzik tells him, hey, there's this count, or maybe he's a baron or something. He's got six fingers on a hand. That's the guy who killed your dad. All right, I need to get into fighting mode. How come he couldn't have witnessed this? We don't see any character actually acknowledge the six finger man, aside from Wesley. And he doesn't relay the information to Inigo. Even during their duel or leading up to it, that information is not directly inherited by Inigo. He does not say, oh, you're the guy with the six fingers. Well, they break into the castle, disrupt the wedding. Uh, there's a pretty terrible effect where they have a giant statue lit on fire and it's supposed to be Andre the Giant. In HD, it's not even passable. So they get in the break of the wedding. Everybody's running off. Uh, but the wedding seemingly took place, like the Humperdinck ordered it. Same man and wife, and then they're off. It's official now. So at the honeymoon suite, she's going to kill herself. She's going to stab her, stab herself in the chest. And uh, Wesley's like, "Oh, there's an absence of perfect breasts in this world. Be ashamed to damage yours." Something to that extent. And then, uh, so he talks her out of that. She's like, "Yeah, you come to rescue me." He gets into a little bit of a duel with. The, the prince, though he can hardly walk. The prince gets tied up and Nico Montoya comes in. This was after he killed the guy. Uh, you kill my father, prepare to die. He's been stabbed several times in the process. Now the last time Buttercup saw Inigo or Fezzik, they were bad guys. And she never questions this. Just, okay, let's make our escape. Whatever. They jump out the window and ride off and everybody's all happy. There is a good kiss at the end of the movie. I feel like that endears it to the women. But just to say it's well shot or executed isn't enough. They have to beat you over the head with it. Of all, all the beautiful kisses in history, this one put them all to, to shame. Something like that it says Columbo. And it's like, yeah, I think you drove home the point here, but I mean, it's like LeBron James. If you say you're the greatest of all time, it's not as cool as being the greatest of all time and not having to say it, letting the actions speak for themselves.
know, what if Columbo wrapped up this movie saying, it's the greatest story ever told? I mean, The Princess Bride is okay. Like, I don't, I don't feel like it's as funny as people are led on to believe. I don't feel it's even that remarkable. It's passable. It's not IMDb Top 250 worthy. I give it two and a half out of four stars.